Okay. Hey, good morning. It's a good Tuesday, right? It's so good. good <laughs> it's going to be an even better Tuesday that you're going to join us on our live today. You're not kidding. Everybody had a nice weekend, I hope. Everybody's so rushed. We're trying to remember every last little minute thing to get ready for Christmas Eve. And you Christmas know what? Day. I the, Everybody I am talking to lately is going crazy over what to do for neighbor gifts. So I know that we try to touch on that a little bit, but I want to tell you something. The food nanny shop over in Midway and in Highland is on fire. <laughs> we are busy, 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 busy. And I want to show you something really fast. This is the cutest greatest idea that you could be giving to any neighbor gift teacher gift whatever gift you want to call it it's our french salt with our food nanny measuring spoon and a lot of you don't know about the measuring spoon which i'm shocked about it's truly all we use yes it's the greatest invention that has ever been made it is a four in one it's a tablespoon a teaspoon and then if you flip it over it's a half and a fourth half and a fourth it's Tables the greatest teaspoon. you know when you can't find the fourth or the half or the they're whatever they're always missing they're always missing yeah. they're always everywhere <laughs> and they're the greatest thing ever so are. we are wrapping this up and i'm going to give my kids teachers a little bag of five pound kamut too because everybody's got to have the kamut in their life but if you're waiting for this do this um our ginger snap cookies that we showed um, oh, there's so many cookies that we've already shown and, and lots of our cookie ideas. They're online too. Go to thefoodnanny.com. Hey, Liz, I messaged you about books and Kamut. Can I come by and get it tomorrow? Yes. Yes, yes. you can. Uh, you guys, the Facebook, I don't know why it zooms in. Anyways, our filming skills, you know us. It's not very well. <laughs> anyway, so this is a great last minute gift the to Kamut, try our salt and Kamut. The Kamut and the salt go hand in hand. It's like a marriage. They're both ancient. They're both completely organic, 100% natural. The best salt in the world, the best grain in the world. Right. Wait, can't wait for you to try it. The two of them combined is oh, a great marriage, like so she good. said. So if you want to order cookbooks, of course, those are the best two. Cookbook, salt, Kamut. Um, any of our products, the spoons, our aprons, aprons, yeah. hot pads, any of that stuff it's is you have really until today and tomorrow to for sure get it out to you by, by Christmas. Christmas. Okay. Yeah. So first time joining. Welcome. Welcome. Welcome to our life. We so, did gain a few new followers we did. over so, the weekend, which is so great. Right. So, so thanks for being here and we'll give a quick little intro. So Do happy it. to have you. We're just basically the food nannies together running this Instagram. We've been around for about 15 years. I have at least. Lizzie's, you have. Lizzie's a lot younger than I have, and she is our young, my youngest daughter. And um, she decided to do start this Instagram last October, a year ago. And so we've had a ball bringing um, our ideas about how to get family dinner on the table on a consistent basis for your family yeah because the hardest part about dinner is trying to figure out what to cook right so we give you a meal plan and i am loving the meal plan this last two weeks yeah it's super good tonight's a manicotti oh talking about cheese oh talking about talking cheese. about cheese manicotti is so good two of the best cheeses um not only taste but for your health <laughs> in manicotti that. which is Ricotta and mozzarella, two of the best cheeses for health and taste. Amazing. That's in our manicotti tonight. And super easy recipe. Very easy. Anybody super simple. Can make it. Super simple. That's in our first book. Right. Um, on Tuesday night. Italian yeah. night. It's Italian night. It's we Italian go by night. Nights it's actually on here. page 70 in our first book. So let me show you um, page 70 what, what that recipe looks like. Oh. So three cheese manicotti on page 70 in our first book probably the easiest manicotti you'll ever make super fast it serves eight um oh six to eight i would say sometimes people want three or four each but yeah six to eight try the manicotti serve it with our homemade hey alicia 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 just um just write her after she'll totally be here we will make that work. Yeah. So Sorry. our um, French baguettes is right. what we're making tonight with right. our manicotti. Can also serve it with all of our cheese. 
this goes with anything. Your recipes are fabulous, but something that I feel like she really has become known for and what we've become known for and me is the bread. The bread and the pizza is the gateway to everybody's heart and because that is, look, from start to finish, you can make these in 30 minutes. Incredible French baguettes. These are made, of course, with our Kamut. That's all we ever, ever, ever use. And salt. So yes, the only of thing Hi, in guys. This, so from start to finish, when you get good at it, 30 minutes, it says in the recipe, 45. Right. So the only ingredients in this bread is water, yeast, salt, a tiny bit of sugar, and flour, our Kamut flour. That's it. Yeah. So this is... Um, this is a, a great bread. It's meant to be eaten the Some day Some are wrapping this as neighbor gifts. Yes. I had a girl come the other day, and she was going to wrap this um, in the parchment paper, like we told and her to. And that's so fun to, to wrap, do. You can wrap these really cute in parchment paper, and that's a great neighbor gift as well. We'll show how to do that in a minute, actually. Okay, so the reason we're showing a cheese board is because... We've shown them a lot on our Instagram, but a lot of you are like, you're not really giving us like step-by-step step what cheese is what to do. We did a beautiful wedding in November. So last month we did this beautiful wedding at Katherine Heigl. If you guys know Katherine Heigl, that is a famous, wish she was there, but we met her husband. He was singing and I held Katherine Heigl's baby. <laughs> That's something I'll remember, his, yeah. his, her little baby. Yeah. But anyways, we put together the most incredible cheese board because everybody loves it. Everybody loves Everybody it. loves a cheese board. But the thing is, here in America, we don't eat cheese like they do in Europe. No. Especially France and Italy. Um, Germany eats a lot of cheese. They're eating cheese nonstop. 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 And in the Netherlands, everybody's eating cheese. We don't eat it as much. We started out with cheddar and i think americans are known for cheddar okay let me tell you the funniest story before we get into this um i just went to jim gaffigan i love him i don't know if you guys love jim gaffigan I think but he's so funny. i think he's clean humor and if you're married and have kids you relate to him on every level wow. and it was so funny he said that he just went to france this summer he was doing a tour in france and he said that he was sitting um, he was sitting down and they were giving cheese nonstop. And he said, I have never eaten so much cheese in my entire life. And he said they would bring me out all these cheeses and he had no clue what they were <laughs> called or what they were. And he said, so is it cheddar? He's like, is it like cheddar? And I'm totally butchering the way that he said it. And the waiter would just look at him like, what? Because he'd be like, Blah, blah, blah. You know, yeah, you got your yeah, three, whatever. Yeah. And he's like, does it taste like cheddar? <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, it was so funny. And so that is, I'm like, a lot of us don't, we don't know the cheeses as well as they do. And Trader Joe's, it's making it, making that it is making really it so we can. Us. Harmon's also has one of the most incredible um, cheese delis in all of Utah. Right. They have an incredible cheese selection. I think Smith's is also amazing. Trader Joe's. But Trader Joe's is, is affordable. A, yeah, it's, it's, and it's Costco. Like, Costco too. We can't forget yeah, about Costco Costco's too. cheese. They were bringing the cheese before I think anybody was, you know, 20 years ago. And then let's not ago. forget your cheese farm. Right down the street from me. That is like becoming famous in the little town of Woodland. Gold How is Creek, that? Gold Creek um, Farms is famous for, <laughs> let me grab the Could never have enough cheese, thanks Pat. Okay mom, so we're gonna show you how to put okay. this together. So this is before, yeah, let's, so basically the reason why we're doing this is because during the holidays, so many people want to do a little cheese board, but they don't know where to begin, they don't know anything about cheeses, and you know what? Some people are not sure how to eat cheeses. Exactly. And so, of course, here in America, we want to have cheddar on the plate for everybody that is not sure about what the cheese tastes like. So we want to have cheddar or um, jack cheese with jack jalapeno or something like that. But I love this. Once they put their her kids to bed, they get out a cheese board and oh. a movie with her and her hubby for a snack date night at home. I love, love that. Love that. Love that. You know what? I I think I come home from church every week and, and have pull a out a board. cheese board. That's what we're doing now. Yeah, for I years. can't. I know. I know. I can't stop it. We can't either. That's our tradition. Is we come home from church and we get out all the cheese. 
Um, with all the crackers. With all the crackers, so but I have to say, Lizzie, if we're not having a Kamut sandwich for lunch, we're getting out our cheese. Yeah. And so this is, this is what I keep my cheese in, in my fridge. It's in this little basket. And when I use one, I put it in a Ziploc. If you don't, if you don't use as many as we do, then get, you know, these little um, Tupperware called things. I get these at Ikea, I love them. Um, and put your leftover cheese in there or really nicely into these heavier Ziplocs because cheese smells. And some of them have a strong odor. They don't taste like the odor, but they have a strong odor. Put them in the Ziploc bags. So this is the cheese that's down the street from me at Gold Creek Farms award-winning smoked cheddar. We usually have that in our fridge. It's so good. I can also run down the street at any time when I'm out of fresh Parmesan. They have fresh Parmesan and Romano. Many other, Lizzie, you have one of your favorites. You don't even there. know how amazing this is because she lives in the middle of like nowhere. So for her to have a cheese farm down the street that is like world known, becoming world known, that's pretty amazing. Okay, Trader Joe's had food has food wraps to wrap your cheese in bees cloths. Bees wax. They do? How neat. I'll check that out. You know, my grandmother, she always um, had the um, the cheese wrap. It's called, um, it's actually called cheese, what's it called? Beeswax cheese No, wrap? What? no, what did she, what did this gal say? She said it's the cheese, the beeswax cloth. Yes, okay, <laughs> that's basically what my grandmother used to wrap her cheese in and they never put it in the refrigerator. And it was always cheddar, but it was on a big round and it was thick. Mm. So that's where my love of cheese began. Yeah. And they didn't put it in the refrigerator because oftentimes cheese does not need to be refrigerated all the time. I didn't know that. So, okay. So how do we start, what do we do? How do we prepare a cheese board and how do we eat it? Um, so king, I wanna show that one. Oh. So king of cheese is, you know what that is. Um, everybody I'm sure knows what the king of all cheeses is. And that's Parmesan Reggiano. That's from Italy. That's king of all cheese. Um, something years ago, I figured out how to serve Parmesan Reggiano, Reggiano on a cheese board. You need a pick. Very important. Not a cheese knife like this for Parmesan Reggiano. You need a pick. And so this is how you do. You just, when, when it's on the cheese board, you get it like this. Oh, no. You, you pick it and then... Of course, this is always served with honey in Italy. And it's always served around here. This is honey from Trader Joe's. This has beeswax Look at it. in it. That's the, it's, it's the best honey. Incredible. Incredible. Incredible honey. And honey um, and Parmesan Reggiano go hand in hand. They yes. are delicious. If you don't like honey, don't worry about it. You don't need to serve it with it, but I'm telling you, it goes hand in hand with honey. Um, the, um, a lady saying in uh, the Smiths at West Point in northern Utah has the most amazing cheese. Great. Wow. Okay. So everybody that lives over there by West Point. And everybody says they're using the beeswax wraps. Oh, that, wow. <laughs> they sell them at Target, too. Where have I been? Oh, yeah, where are we? Okay, where have I been on the cheese <laughs> cheese wax wrap? That's pretty funny. Okay, I'm going to go check it out. Beeswax. Be I mean, beeswax wrap. I'm going to go check it out today. Yeah. So while we're on Parmesan Reggiano, which is king of all cheeses, it's also super good for you. Mm -hmm. It's probably one of the best that you'll put into your body. It's very low in fat. It's good for um, your bones, your dental health, your blood pressure, um, and of course, calcium. All cheese is good for that. Okay, now, another great cheese that I love is Telegio, and that's also from Italy. This is one of our favorites, one of our very favorites. Romano is a great cheese. All of these are really good for you as well. Okay, let's move to Spain. It happens to be one of my favorite cheeses and is always on my cheese board. If I'm choosing one or two or three cheeses, Lizzie, we're always choosing this. Mm -hmm. Manchego is always on there. This is from Spain. It's actually from sheep. And it's the only sheep cheese that I 
love that I'm loving right now. I think we go in stages or yeah, every few years. Yeah, there's some become our more favorite. A, yeah, we get okay, a favorite. Okay, but you need to tell them how, you, how many cheeses you honestly think you'd be putting on a cheese board. Okay, three to four. Um, is is good. We're telling him all, all of our favorites, right. but you know what I mean? Right. We should be telling him like which, how many... Which is what we're going to do in just okay, a second. Okay. I'm going to tell you another favorite, which is Gouda. And that melts incredibly. Gouda melts incredibly. And when we go to Mexico, we find out that that's really the cheese that they're oh, using. Oh, yeah, that's what they use. For their queso fundido yes. and all kinds of things. Yes. Gouda's a great one. But I, if you're really a cheese connoisseur, you know more about the orange Gouda. The more orange and the harder, the more expensive and the more fine. Um, the less, the one that's a little bit softer is really good to melt. But this one I happen to love as well. It's more orange and more hard. That's from Holland. Then I have one of my favorite cheeses in the world, and this is Comte from France. I love the taste. I love the taste. It's None of these cheeses are cheap. Um, are inexpensive. Gouda would be less than, say, Comte. And then we get over to Gruyere from Switzerland, which is going to be expensive. And that's on our sandwich. That's the best. We put this on sandwiches. We make, we put this in fondue. Um, we, you can do, just put it on your cheese board as well. And what goes with it is the Emmental, which is, um, both of these are from Gruyere, France, or Switzerland, Emmental, Switzerland. This happens to be one that runs in my family. They actually make this cheese. My maiden name, they were the Hershey's. They actually do Emmental cheese from Switzerland. So when you visit these towns, they also become a part of you, such as Munster cheese from Munster, Germany. That will become a part of your life. When you go around, look for the cheeses when you go to Europe that are made in certain towns. From France, everybody loves a brie, and you need a brie, if you can, on your cheese board. This is um, one that I actually love. It's called Camembert, and it's Monet's very favorite. It's from Normandy, France. It's so cute. You can do a million things with this. Put it in the oven, put nuts and brown sugar on it, melt it. That's what we did for a neighbor yeah. gift like a couple of years ago. Yeah. Amy did that. Yeah. She heated it up, put the nuts on it with crackers. It was incredible. This is. I love that. Monet loved this cheese and I, I love, love it. I love that. It's warmer. Oh, it's so good. Melted cold. on a sandwich. We're gonna, in fact, we're going to show a sandwich made out of this yeah. um, soon. So let's go over here and show how we actually might put together a cheese board. Um, there's a lot of a lot of blue cheeses that are great. I love Saint Agur from France, but I'll tell you the one from the Gold Creek Farms here in Woodland, Utah, is probably one of my favorites. And the reason is is because it's it's not so soft. It's a harder blue, and it isn't as strong. It's delicious. It's mm. really good. I love this blue. One of our very favorites, Lizzie, from Trader Joe's is the um, share. It's called, this C-H-E-V-R-E is pronounced share, and what it means is goat cheese. But this is the honey goat from Trader Joe's, and if you're, again, if you're a honey nut like we are, it's one of the best ever. It's amazing. If you don't choose the honey and just get regular, then we have all of these cheese toppings, cheese jams that we're so into. I love the blueberry. Pepper Lane is made here. Yes. I love the blackberry buzz. Most of these, um, this one doesn't have jalapeno And then show your jam. Um, Angela just said that she made your this jam, yes. the jalapeno jam, and put it over the cream cheese. It's, Everybody was dying. If we, we love that. We always have this. At, we always have this on our cheese board. It's right here in our little cups is our own homemade cranberry jalapeno jam. Here's another raspberry jalapeno. Oh, no, that is not the raspberry. I got out the wrong jar. But we have a cranberry jalapeno. Um, but I love blackberry. I love blackberries with cheese. I love grapes. I love pears and apples for fruit to serve with cheese. Also, sometimes put a little, a few nuts on. So, how would we create a cheese board? Right here, we have our Parmesan Reggiano which we usually have. Someone's asking you, why don't you use local honey? And We um, do. Oh, we do. This one, we just happen to love um, the Trader Joe's. And I'm trying to think of the local 
name on the honey that we do use and we've talked about. Yes, for, you need it. They said, do you freeze this? Yes. yes, after it sits out for 24 hours, you can put it in the freezer or Just the fridge if you're gonna right. give it. Or if you're gonna, or if eat, you're it. gonna eat it. So we might have a Parmesan Reggiano and add a blue, something, there's an old saying, something old, something new, something blue. It's, that's kind of a fun little rhyme. You Isn't know, that for to, a wedding? No, no, <laughs> but it's also for cheese. So maybe a blue and a Parmesan, and then we'd probably add maybe the, even the honey goat, or we, everybody loves a, a slice of brie. These are a little, bit more expensive. This is a triple cream brie. I would, um, if that would be, that would be nice there. Add a little manchego um, or a smaller amount. Just, you know, just because it comes like that doesn't mean you can't cut it and put the rest back into the fridge. Add a little manchego, um, add some gouda a little bit of Gouda, three or four or five, but a lot of people say that you always need a blue, uh, Parmesan Reggiano. Um, it's nice to have some, some brie, even if you cut just a little slice like this. A lot this. of people don't know how to eat brie, Mom. You can eat the whole thing. You don't have to take this part off of brie, okay? You need to have a, a, a different knife for each cheese. So say you were serving these, you would have a different knife for each one. So it's just whatever you... And then you can put the crackers on the board. Yes. So we, these, these are... These are our favorite. These are our very favorite crackers. These are the crackers that we use. The fig and olive from Trader Joe's. The raisin rosemary. I love the pistachio um, pomegranate for Christmas especially. These are our go-to, our Triscuit Thin Crisps and our whole grain, um, our wheat, wheat fans, fans, which are our go-to, always. And then we try to have these on hand. So those are our go-to crackers. It's really fun as you go around to collect little spoons because when you, when you put out your cheese boards, whether you make a meal with it and serve it with like our, um, our, our homemade meatballs and sauce, or you put a charcuterie board with it, which is a whole nother thing that we'll talk about. This can be a meal, and it can be really good for you. <laughs> really good going. for you. And I like to have salami on it too. Yeah, well, yes, we usually have the salami. The salami. And um, different, the Columbus salami is the one we usually buy, but just, any good salamis, I'd like to, when it's, when we're really doing something special, we like to go to Tony Caputo's and, yeah. and get that. But, but that's, the Columbus salami is amazing. The Columbus Everybody's is so loving good. your kitchen, Mom. They're being good. very nice. Oh, this is my so mom's nice. new kitchen that yeah. has been remodeled, and we'll show more yeah. later, but it does look super yeah, good. In January, we're going to have Desiree over, who helped me. Um, with my kitchen, who helped me design everything. What are your favorite fruits? Okay, okay so they, we said yes. apples. So we love the Honeycrisp apples. We grapes. love the grapes, pears. Um, I think those are our favorite fruits. The apples, the pears, the grapes. Um, I also love to serve fresh blackberries. Oh, That's yeah. for something very special fresh blackberries with cheese. Blackberries go great with cheese, as do apples, pears, and grapes. But where is, where, where, there is this. Oh, I'm glad you're showing this. Yes, I was gonna this, talk about oh, this. Oh yes, this is what we're doing for Christmas Eve. Okay, so the Italian picnic at home is so much fun. This is Huga. You know how we've been talking about Huga? This is creating Huga in your home. We sit around, like I've done it at my house a couple of times, around a coffee table. Or on the floor. Or on the floor, yeah. We light the candles. We've got our tea candles. Like this going everywhere, and my kids love it. You get the bread. You toast it. We've got our... Um, our great, what's our little grill called again? Yeah, well, I just it's, forgot. It's the Italian tabletop. Yeah, our Italian tabletop grill that is amazing. That we like grill the bread and then you take it off. It explains exactly how to do this. All the cheeses with the meats. It's my kids' like most fond memory every time we do this. They love this dinner. And we're doing it for Christmas Eve this year. We'll show all, we'll show yeah, it. Yeah, we'll show you the whole thing. But And we'll show it again, too, so that you can create it. We'll show it at Christmas Eve, but we'll also yeah. show it again. But these cheeses, 
um, are are pretty affordable. They are. Um, and if once you get used to eating them, like for instance, Gruyere, it took me forever to pronounce Gruyere. But it's so fun once you do. And once you get to know the taste of these different cheeses, you will crave them and you will want them often. Don't let anybody tell you that the cheese are one of the foods that you have to stay away from. Just like you have to stay away from bread. No, bring these back into your life because I promise you, calcium is something that we all need right and this is what you get from cheese yeah but not only that quality cheeses in all of your recipes are going to make them better they upgrade the quality on everything on every level i i can't even like so many times do you know that one of the most number one questions is our alfredo sauce how they all use a really cheap already pre-shredded cheese and they're like, it doesn't mix smoothly enough in the Alfredo. Well, it's because that cheese, <laughs> I swear, is like waxy and just cheap and disgusting. And it doesn't melt super well. I'm serious. Well, the cheese, some of the cheese um, spreads, what are they called? Like cheese whiz and different things. Those are not considered cheese. No, they're not a no. real quality cheese. So if you can go to a Trader Joe's, Smith's, if they've got a deal, whatever, you can find quality cheeses, freeze them. What? Freeze, freeze, but, freeze if you don't use it all. Yes, but I must say something about freezing really good cheese. It does downgrade the quality. I know, but you do it all the I time. I know, I know, but the really good ones, I freeze mozzarella all the time. We freeze mozzarella and we freeze cheddar. But I don't often, I have frozen Gruyere, but I don't often, I don't buy enough Gouda or enough Manchego. Or we, you, you wouldn't freeze Brie. You wouldn't freeze brie. Okay, but, but we, a lot of them you can. Yes, like mozzarella. Yeah, uh -huh. for sure. And cheddar, you can freeze. Mozzarella, you can freeze. Super okay. good. Um, what's the grain, the grain that you showed last time? So, let, so let me go grab it. Let me, what? She's going to go grab it. Yeah, processed cheeses. Okay. Not to plug uh, Trader Joe's again, but the fake butter with brie is amazing. Oh, that, that sounds, sounds good. delicious. I love the, what's the one called with the, the wine or whatever? Oh, um, I can't remember. I don't know. It's infused. An unexpected cheddar. There's so many that I love yeah. from Trader Joe's. Yeah. So this is our grain right here, our Kamut grain. If you're interested in that, it, we sell it in five pounds and 25 pound bags. Makes everything you cook better. Every cheese sandwich that you're going to put your cheese on. No, she on. was talking about the grain. What? You were showing the grain. So she was showing the whole grain. Oh, okay. Of the Kamut that you can grind yourself. Oh, okay. <laughs> you can, yes, you can buy the grain, but it is like a whole wheat. This is the white wheat that can replace your all-purpose flour. So she'll show you the grain again. And what grinder did you recommend, she's asking. So this is the whole grain that you can buy and grind yourself. I know, but what grinder? Oh, uh, what's the grinder? Okay, let me get it. Um, oh. No, so it's the Nutramil. Nutramil. Yeah, it's the Nutramil that I use. She likes the Nutramil. Okay, am I, am I Kamu, okay, this might be typoed a little wrong. Kamu only girl now that I have a recipe that calls for self-rising flour. What is that and what should I do? Do you know? She has a recipe that calls for self-rising flour. You would just use the Kamut in place. Um, we just, you, you, can, you can use the all-purpose white Kamut in place of any flour. Oftentimes, self-rising might have a little um, baking powder or something in it. Um, I don't know, I would have to check. But we don't use that flour usually, but I know that there's a lot of great recipes that do. So, you can substitute. You can substitute it though. Find out what's in that flour though. Okay. Not sure which one. What, you're where's using. your beautiful shirt from? Blouse from? Um, made Ew. well. <laughs> it's so funny. We both showed up in black today. It was not planned. Okay. How do you use the whole grain? I want to make whole wheat bread, but I've never ground wheat before. Okay. So just get yourself a wheat grinder. There's don't. I mean, now I even have a hand wheat grinder and electric. Um, but that's going to take you too long. So get a hold of an electric wheat grinder and grind your own flour. And I always have in my freezer the whole grain 
the whole grain bread in the minis and the all-purpose white flour. Yeah. I always have both, and I probably prefer the whole grain for the bread, for me. In this, in this recipe, you can do either one. In this, I prefer the white, the all-purpose white in my baguettes and most other breads. But for the kamut, um, the recipe that's on the back of here, you can make either with the all-purpose white or with the whole grain. You can do either. I, I love them both. I can't get enough of either. Okay. Okay, are you done? Yeah. <laughs> so, okay, so does anybody have any more questions on cheese? Lizzie, what do you, what, tell us, tell us what you love so much about exposing well, we got more. Kids. We've got more questions. Okay. I want to make mini loaves of kamut bread. How long do I bake and do I do after them temp all from the original recipe? Okay, so it's the same temperature. Yes. But every oven is so different. Mine cooks in about 18 minutes. 18 to 20 minutes. So just watch it. You're gonna obviously not cook it for as long as it says because this is telling you the big loaves. Right. So you're doing the same temperature but just less time. Just when, you know, open your oven after about 18 minutes and take your hot pad and look at the bottom of the loaf of bread. If it's starting to brown, it's done. Okay. If it's not brown we at love... all on the bottom, it isn't. Right, right. That's how you know bread is done. Okay. And rolls. We love our kamut flour. My baguettes are delicious. One thing, they're turning out a bit flat. Any suggestions to have them come out of the oven more rounded? Um, if they're turning out a bit flat, then you're either not letting them rise enough before you put them in the oven, or you've let them rise too long and they flatten. So, um, as soon as they're double in size, then you need to put them in. And the test is to poke your thumb the very end, and if it sticks, if, if it stays, if your thumbprint stays in the dough, then you know your dough is ready for the oven. Yeah. And that's in any, most any bread but artisan. Is there a gadget other than a knife for slicing bread that I use for more even cuts? We just use a knife. I know. But you I'm guys sure are coming up with all kinds yeah. of new things you're telling us about. You said you know when rolls and bread are well are done well. I didn't hear what you said. Oh, it's brown on the bottom. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> when the rolls, Lizzie, you tell them. You know how exactly no, you say I it. Okay, when the rolls are brown, they're light light brown on the bottom, then you you know your rolls are done. If they're not light brown on the bottom, more than likely they are not done. And same with your bread. But you never want to overcook either. Yeah. If you overcook either, they're just not as good. No. The bread or the rolls. Or cookies or, or anything cookies overcooked. Or anything. <laughs> okay, Kamut flour makes my favorite. Okay, Kamut bread makes my most favorite toast. So, it's so, amazing. so delicious. Isn't it amazing? Is there a benefit to grinding the whole grain yourself versus buying already ground whole wheat? Yes. And, that, and the benefit to it is you get the most nutritional value when you grind it yourself because you're grinding it and you're using it. You're grinding it and you're using it. And that is the best, the most nutritional value you can get. Because once the grain is ground and it's whole grain, our, our all-purpose flour lasts for two years. But the, the whole grain flour gets the best nutritional value in six months. So it's, yeah, just the more fresh, the better. And that's with, of course, anything that we eat. Any vegetable that we grow or pick or choose to eat and fruit, all of it. Yep. Right? Okay, what is a good electric grain grinder? Uh, it's a neutral mill. That's the one I'm using right now. Yeah. And, but I've had different, different ones, and this one is good. But like, like Lizzie was saying earlier about the cheese, um, look, at, look at your... Um, Stop. Look at your, make sure that you look at your dates on your cheese. Because when you, and same like with buttermilk, when you're buying buttermilk or sour cream or cream or anything like that, make sure you look be, to see that it's not going to be done old in two days. Um, some of the cheese, some of the cheeses will last a couple of months. Others are good for a month or so. And like Lizzie said, you can freeze them. Mozzarella for sure. And cheddar you can freeze for sure, but some of these more delicate cheese you don't want to freeze. So you don't want to buy too much. You don't want to buy too much of it. You want to keep it as fresh as you can. Okay, so you buy Kamut from us. 
Um, we have this online and then we have pickups because our shipping on a 25 pound bag is way too heavy right now. So you can go to thefoodnanny.com and you can order two of these in a 13 flat rate box until our shipping, we've got a new shipper coming. So we've got better prices coming our way. So you can get this at thefoodnanny.com. This is all we use now. It's amazing. Daughter made Kamut chocolate chip cookies gone in a day. Thank you. Okay, have you ever heard of a pre-diabetic able to eat bread of made with Kamu? Yes, we have. We, we had, had a girl the other four. day. Yeah, three or four people that have come in yeah. to talk to us about it. Yeah, her doctor actually asked her what she was doing different because her levels on everything were down. And she was a diabetic. Yeah. Yeah, so be careful diabetics. Um, but I think that you'll find that this flower will be really good for you. What we're trying to, to teach everyone is, so many of you have been told for so long that you can't have bread in your diet, you can't have cheese. You can have all of these things, eaten with portion control. Um, the 25 pound bag is not online yet because the shipping for it is as much as the flour. So we're waiting to go with the new shipping company and gonna do that. So yes, we do sell the whole grain. Yes, but it only comes in a 50 pound yes. bag. So if you don't live in Utah, you probably don't want to pay for that, but we do ship that. Shipping is all I mean, about- I do have it. <laughs> shipping is all about weight and flour is heavy. So we're, we're, that's why we have pickups for you in Utah. And for those of you who happen to be in St. George, we'll be down there after Christmas with a load for those of you who'd like to pick some up down there. Yes, it's teaspoon for teaspoon. Yes, this is how the French do it. We went, we saw, we talked to all of them. This is the way that we like it. And we're going back in summer. Yeah, we're going this summer. But you can grind it and you can make it more fine if you want to do that. But I feel like in bread, it totally dissolves. And then you get a little bit of a crunch in like a dessert, like a cookie or something like that. But this is how they do it, teaspoon for teaspoon. If you grind the wheat, do I use the same bread recipe? Yes, that's on the back of this. Yes. Exact. Yes, yes, yes. Kamut is white flour. White and wheat flour has about the same carb count, but wheat is digesting slower, digested slower, so that is the benefit of wheat slower to digest so it doesn't spike your blood sugars what do you have to say to that mom <laughs> uh, i'm not sure about all of that but what i know is that whole grain wheat that I this know. is the most superior whole grain wheat you can buy um it's it's organic it's pure strain it comes from the very grain that was brought over from um egypt and it is grown um, never been modified. Um, the, you know, so much of the wheat that we buy today, they have changed it and modified it to get the highest yield. This gets half the yield of the normal wheat that you're purchasing. And the reason is, is because um, it hasn't been modified. And so it is superior to any wheat that you'll eat, that you'll find it's the most delicious, the best texture, and the best for you. And we offer it in whole grain and we also offer it in white. And the reason why we offer it in white is because we're finding that all of you gluten-free people can tolerate it. Italy found that first. They did a huge, huge study over in Austria. And the Italians went over to Austria and they figured this out with the Austrians. <laughs> and then we found out about it, Lizzie and I did. And um, we went crazy when we found out about it because it's superior to any white flour you'll use, the taste, texture, and digestibility. So that's what we know. This about is called our the white wheat. But yes, it, it's, it's white, but it's got still the wheat in it. It's been stripped a little bit to add yes. the white. Well, so no, that's it's been, yeah, it's, right? been, it's stripped of the wheat. Right, it's been stripped of the bran. The bran. And so <laughs> it's, it, we. To make it white to a make little it, bit. Yes, to make it, to make it all purpose white. But it's more tolerable and more digestible in white than the whole wheat for the gluten-free people. For many people, many people prefer this taste. Yeah. Which one do you prefer, Lizzie? Well, this is for everything. You can't do that right. for everything. I agree that the grain is amazing for the bread. It's the most incredible whole wheat bread. Right. But no, this is like... 
This is upgraded that my taste of cookies, cakes, everything. everything. Pizza, everything. Pizza dough. I feel like our pizza dough is more authentic than it's ever been. I every in every single way. And I feel like you do start to feel it once you eat it on a consistent basis. You can feel that your body is totally different. There's something that too many people that are coming to buy Kamut for me that keep saying, a lot of you keep saying the same thing. You say, I just feel so bloated after I eat white flour. I had a girl that came and said that yesterday, and that is something that white flour can do. It's totally stripped of everything that's good for you. There is nothing healthy left in all-purpose white, but we used it forever. Yeah. I mean, we used it forever because there was never a better option to replace an all-purpose flour. Of course, there's been wheat. You would cook with wheat all the time, or you would mix it. But we it. wouldn't make our cookies you and our cakes no. and everything. This is naturally enriched all-purpose white flour. Other white flours have to be enriched. This is already naturally enriched. And it's the taste, the texture, everything about it is so superior to any other white flour. It's amazing. And we can't stop talking about it because seriously, it's changing everybody's life and our lives. And there's gluten people that if this is the option, if you're not, we can't say that it's gluten free. So don't come no. back to us and say, it's you told free. me. You can't but, have it if you're celiac. No, no, celiac, you can't handle but it. But some do. It it's depends crazy. on which spectrum, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. But anyways, but if you're gluten intolerant, you really should give it a try because every single person that is gluten intolerant that we know, our fannies out there, all say that they can have it. So this is something that we're like, we feel like this was put into our hands, the kamut and the salt, and we feel like, how can we not tell everybody about it? I feel like my mom's been spreading the love of her recipes and her meal planning and all of that, and that is what we are still about, but really the products have become a game changer. They become a game changer. For our health. For our health and everything. And, so and the taste. If you've got something that's healthier for you and it tastes better, hello, this is crazy. It's rocking our world. Okay, there's a couple more questions and then we'll totally stop. Okay, so the ground Kamut white is not wheat. I thought it was too. It's a white wheat. It's right. a white wheat. The, 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 what, did, what was the question? Um, the ground Kamut white is not wheat. Well, it's wheat. It's wheat. It's just been stripped of some of the bran. Okay, that's it. It's it's the Kamut wheat. It's just the Kamut all-purpose white flour. Okay, that's just it. It's just been stripped of some <laughs> of the bran. If you want the whole, so funny. if you want the whole Kamut grain, then buy the grain and grind it yourself. That's the best way. And you to can buy mix it. this with the wheat. Yes, you can do say you 70 do, 30. Yeah. Which we do. Yes. We will we'll mix, we'll do 30% of the um, all purpose white and mix it. So it would be say seven cups. Then you're getting of this. Super, super healthy there. Yeah, and, super. Three, and three cups of the whole grain. S seven cups of this, three cups of the whole grain. That's 70 30. That makes a super good mix. Mm -hmm. That makes a super good mix. We haven't talked a lot about that. We have before, but we can sure talk about that more in the future. I love being back in Utah. Thank you. And yeah, the baby has a babysitter, my sister. <laughs> He's too crazy. And all he wants is me. So the baby can't be in the videos anymore. But thank you. That's so nice. Okay. I know I keep asking, but how much does one cup of Kamut weigh? Sometimes my items come out too dense. So I think I'll do better if I know what a cup is supposed to weigh. Okay. We can weigh that for you. DM us again, okay? I love your passion and thank you for your live today and introducing this to me. That is so nice. Yeah. I normally get heartburn using all-purpose flour and since changing exclusively to Kamut, no heartburn. Wow. Plus, it tastes so much better. Yeah. You guys, I feel like this is what we're bonding over. This is seriously, I know we're bonding on everything else, but this is what is, is exploding. Everybody is seeing such a difference, and that could not make us happier. And we weren't even going to share it a year ago. We weren't. Because it's all we've eaten for almost four years, and we weren't going to even share it. No. And then we decided, you know what, we have to share 
um, what exact, exactly Because what honestly, doing. our recipes were then even better. <laughs> they were so and much. So people we said, would, oh, maybe we shouldn't tell anybody what we're using. <laughs> Don't forget the story. When I first went to go visit my mom, she gave me all this salt. I filled my entire suitcase full because we thought we'll never get this in America. There's no way. We literally shipped this from France, by the way, and the salt containers. They're coming. We're not doing a pre-order, but they're coming, so you better watch for it. They're going to be here in like six weeks, our cute salt container. We hope. But she six told weeks. me... Do not tell a soul about this salt. We're just going to have them eat our cookies, and it's just going to be like, woo, look at what's in it. It was just funny. And now, look at what we're doing. We love you that much. We're spreading the love, and it's so we're much We're giving better. you all our secrets. But, you know. Uh-oh. But, yes, yeah, she's right. You do go a shy under a cup. That, except this recipe is exactly cup for we cup. We made this recipe exactly for Kamut. But yes, but we'll try to measure a cup, but you just go shy under a cup. Yeah. She's right. Yeah, we could do it right now if we had time. Okay. So, so basically we've been talking about cheese boards today. We want you to go out there. We want you to get familiar with the cheeses of the world, you guys, because I'm not kidding. Once you do, just like when you use the kamut and the salt, you'll never go back. No. And one more thing. The shipping on the five-pound bag is not that bad. I know that it's, but you can fit two in a 13 flat rate, flat rate box. That's what they're charging us, the postal service. But you can add salt to it. You can add spoons, a hot pad. There's things that can go in the box. So but until January... You, um, yeah, I, it's not bad until January, but yes, it will be better, okay? So everybody, our two-week <laughs> meal stop. plan, our two-week meal plan is out. Um, it's on our website. We, get, we put it out every two weeks on Friday so that you have time to go grocery shopping so that you'll be ready for the week because the most important thing that you'll do for your family is... Cook them dinner. Yeah, cook for your family. We need we need to stop. But okay, we, we go. We keep going. We've been going forever. Okay, we gotta go. Um, we'll so come you back. Say it again. Okay, say what you want to finish. The most important thing you'll do for your family is to cook them dinner, and we have the tools for you to do that. Our books give you our theme nights. Um, they give you all the recipes. It's every tool that you'll need in order to put dinner on the table for your family with our theme nights. We've got manicotti tonight. Manicotti is um, so good. Tomorrow night is German pancakes. I love them. I die for them. Um, and then carne asada tacos and authentic margarita pizza on Friday. But Friday we'll be back on another live and we're going to show you how to do our breadsticks with our Kamut flour. They're so good. Of course, if you don't have the Kamut flour, you can use whatever flour you do um, because our books don't talk about the Kamut because they were written a long time ago. So A hundred years ago. So we just show you how to use the Kamut. You just use a little less than a cup. We, we don't sell the whole grain in a 25-pound bag. No, it only comes in 50. Only the 50. whole grain only comes in 50. But, but yes, manicotti is amazing. Okay, so yeah, we are going to show live. We'll talk about bread. We'll talk about bread tips on Friday because someone just asked, okay? Yeah. So come back Friday, 10 a.m. We're showing the breadsticks, which we haven't shown this breadstick. No, no. We, we haven't, haven't shown, shown it. these breadsticks. There's so many 200 years ago, shown. yes, yes. <laughs> yes, at least. Make your baguettes. Get them ready right now for tonight. Get your manicotti going. What are you fixing for Christmas Day? So Christmas Day, we'll have ham and the traditional turkey for Christmas Day and then our sides. But Christmas Eve, we're doing our Italian picnic with our meatballs. And um, we're doing uh, brownies. The grandkids want our homemade brownies with ice cream and uh, hot fudge on top. So that's what the grandkids I, have requested. I'm like, this is sitting out. How can I not start <laughs> eating it all? So we'll show you that. We have Christmas lots Day. of yeast tips. Come tune in if you're new to it. So we'll try to do some stories between now and then. Uh -huh. um, don't forget about our pre-order on our aprons. They're, they're amazing aprons. Um, we don't have them on today because we're actually not cooking. We're just kind of showing you how to do this. Do a cheese board. It will make your life. It's too much fun. It'll and the make kids your life. love it. Oh. The kids love it. And the, and the kids will get to love, will get, they'll say, Mom, get that cheese again. And it will be one that they find that their taste buds love. 
So try the different ones. These are the, these are our favorites. Um, it's good. It's good to get their taste buds going instead of just always eating cheddar cheese. <laughs> exactly. Have cheddar on there for those that just can't try. The I other I ones. don't even do it. No. I, I can't even do it. I'm like, there's too many other good ones. But you know, Lizzie, for the wedding, we did have cheddar and pepper <laughs> jack because we had such a crowd. Yeah. And it was eaten. Yeah. It was most of it was eaten up. So all you, right, love you guys. Keep cooking. Your, Your family's, family's worth, worth it. it. We'll show the manicotti tonight. Have a great day. Bye bye. Oh, I'm trying to end it.